So I've just got my new iPhone 14 Pro, um, not the Max, just the Pro, and uh, oh yeah, I mean, it arrived yesterday but I was photographing the wedding, so I didn't get out to play with it or anything like that. Um, but that's probably the thing that I want to talk about really, and what this review's about is, I'm a full-time photographer, which is fantastic, and don't get me wrong, I adore my job, I absolutely do, um, it is incredible, however, it is that, it's a job. Um, and so my original love that brought me to the Lake District, which has over the years, as I've developed photography and other subjects rather than landscapes, um, it has just become a job. And I guess a part of the love has gone away from hiking up felt I currently am, um, with a big heavy camera and it's not really enjoyable. So I was wondering, with the new iPhone, if lightweight, highly portable landscape photography was possible with the new iPhone. You know, because what I really like doing is, especially since lockdown, hiking with my dog, who's up there somewhere. Lenny! Come on! Good boy. And... That's what I like. And then obviously when I'm at the top of a fell or on the way, I see amazing landscape and I go, oh, I wish I brought my camera. Um, but you know, I shoot Canon R3s and they're quite heavy with the kit plus a tripod, plus, you know, whatever else bags I've got. We're currently doing an absolute tiny fell, so I don't need it. You know, med kit, water, stuff for the dog. There's lots of things in the way. And uh, yeah, it just takes the fun out. So. I don't expect to win any awards from what I'm about to show you today, um, but I do hope that we can look into the technicality of what this phone can do and in a later video how it prints, because at the end of the day that's what actually matters, isn't it? Is how it prints rather than what it looks like on a screen. And quite a lot of people probably missed that point. Um, so yeah, we're going to do some shots around here, do some panoramics do a, a raw versus whatever we decide to export to and um, yeah just see what happens so stay tuned so as you can see I was just playing around with some different settings here um, but the biggest thing that I came across was that I always wanted to shoot in portrait because that's just the natural way to hold your phone compared to landscape which is the natural way to hold a camera so I think that could be quite interesting in the future going forwards with compositions okay so here we have a load of the raws that were taken today and I'm just gonna have a little quick look at them and then we'll put them into Lightroom and see how things go. So obviously, as they look on screen, they look great. Um, took some photos of Lenny. Now, this is actually where it gets interesting. So I took this photo here as a 16 by nine crop. And if we go to the info, you can see it's 8,064 by four and a half thousand essentially um 24 mil which is that 48 megapixel camera and we can also see it was taken at f <laughs> 1.78 which is awfully specific um but one thing that i have found interesting going between the two is um if we go across to the square format which we can we can see it's 6000 pixels 6000 pixels 78 meg 72 meg here. So there's obviously some interesting things going on there. And then again, if we head to the native 4x3 crop, this is the sort of pixels that we're looking at. And we're looking at about 64 meg file there. You know, and yeah, it's a relatively busy um, shot. Obviously, the sky's not crazy. Um, so that might be a little indicator there. Um, however, what I found really interesting is if we come back out of here, I exported all of these to Lightroom, all of them to Lightroom in RAW. If we head to Lightroom where I've imported them, they're actually, the RAWs, are more or less identical. Obviously I've moved my composition very, very slightly. Um, so 
it's only the Apple software that is clearly understanding that the crop has been taken. The actual raw image is still the original, um, which could be interesting just for composition to make you make you think about what you're doing in a, in a square format and to crop it later. Another thing to show you is if I go onto the next photo, this is how quite a lot of it gets imported as. And if I head to develop, we can see here that the embedded color profile we need to change to Pro Raw. And when we do, that's more what we're looking for. So I'm actually just going to style this one with a 5 so we can work on this. And we'll use this one for reference for everything else. So first of all, we just want to crop. I want to change the angle so the horizon's a bit flatter. Although we have got the pennines in the background, which is lovely. Fantastic. So, exposure wise, it's pretty much bang on. I do want to bring down a little bit of the sky though, so I'm just going to go over here. And like I say, it's going to be a really quick edit. We're not doing anything crazy. I could, of course, use, you know, the smart tools which we have access to, um, but nice and quick edit here. Just bring that down, bring it a little bit more of a balance. Brilliant. So I'm quite happy with that, just as a very quick edit. And if we zoom in, we can see that even at f1.78 or whatever it was, there's actually quite a lot of definition. And it'll be interesting to do another video later, shooting in a different camera app on the iPhone and just going through all the different f-stops and seeing what actually definition changes. But at 100%, that's quite impressive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this, have a little look at what it's like, um, but so far it looks good. Um, I think I can use this for landscape photography. Um, I think we're going to have to have a little look at, you know, doing things with um, long exposures and using apps to do that. Um, but this is definitely something that's interesting and and difficult to work with right now. Is I'm so used to you know, see my images almost as I want them straight out of the Canon R3, um, having to come and change a profile is something that I'm not massively used to, but again, I can batch import and I can, I can do all that at a later date. It's not really an issue. Um, so for example, if we go to this photo, again, f-stop because of how it is in the background. Yeah. That's sort of what I'd expect from any camera, but if we actually have a look at the can itself, that is crazy good definition for a phone. You can even see the graffiti there. It's absolutely fantastic. So I think we're going to print two photos. Um, I can print up to A3 plus and we'll see how they look. So that's the first video and the initial review done and I'm, I'm genuinely quite impressed and excited to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to see if I can maybe get some ND filters for the camera, if not, maybe just hold up my own ND filters to the lens, don't know. Um, obviously I can use a, a gimbal, a really lightweight tripod rather than a heavy tripod. You know, that it does open up quite a lot of ideas for landscape photography um, that I'm now able to access and do. Um, in a lot more portable, lightweight manner. That's hopefully going to be more exciting for me. Um, so yeah, that's sort of all that I've got to say for this current one. Um, be making some more videos, see how it goes, and we'll we'll go from there. So keep up to date, like, subscribe, follow the blog, and we'll see where we end up.